The term, Aryan, was originally used to describe people who were considered civilized, noble, or free, without referring to any specific ethnicity. It was first used by a group of people from Central Asia called Indo-Iranians, who eventually settled on the Iranian plateau. Later, it is believed that the term was also used for Indo-Aryans who migrated south and settled in northern India. Before the 19th century C, the term Aryan did not have a widespread ethnic connotation. It was primarily used by Persians, who referred to themselves as Iranians from Aryans, to distinguish themselves from their Muslim Arab conquerors in the 7th century C. However, even during that time, the usage of the term could be seen more as a distinction of class and personhood rather than purely ethnic. Prior to the conquest, Persia was known as the land of the Aryans, but after the conquest, a term was coined for non-Aryans. The Indus Valley Civilization This civilization was highly advanced as evidenced by Neolithic sites such as Mergar, occupied prior to 7000 BC, whose populace developed agricultural techniques, religious rituals, domestication of plants and animals, and produced impressive artistic works. The cities of Harappa, Mohenjo-Daro, Ganarawala, and others flourished around 2600 BC in the Indus Valley. These advanced urban centers showcased remarkable urban planning and technological skills. They boasted sophisticated systems for running water, drainage, and sewage, with fixtures along the streets. The houses were designed to minimize outside noise and featured innovative wind catchers for natural air conditioning. The Indus Valley people also developed a unique writing system, musical instruments, farming tools, and large boats. They engaged in trade with various civilizations. At some point between circa 1900 circa 1500 BC, the Indus Valley civilization began to decline. Cities were abandoned and there was a significant migration of the people toward the south of the subcontinent. This period of migration and change coincides with the development of Vedic thought and the so-called Vedic period. The Rumors it is rumored that India was invaded and conquered from the west by a nomadic people called the Indo-Aryans around 1500 BC. These Indo-Aryans were of European origin, hence white-skinned, and spoke Vedic Sanskrit. They destroyed the indigenous Dravidian civilization, subjugated the natives, and forced them to migrate to India's south. The Indo-Aryans then composed the Vedas and imposed Hinduism and the caste system upon the hapless Dravidians and other indigenous peoples of India. Max Müller first introduced the Aryan Invasion Theory AIT, in the 19th century, and it was widely accepted as true. Later on, in the late 20th century, it got refined and became known as the Indo-Aryan Migration Theory IMT. According to this theory, the Indo-Aryans migrated to India instead of invading it. However, the result was still the same. The indigenous people were subjugated, and the Indo-Aryan religion, Hinduism, and culture were imposed upon them. The question of Indo-Aryan origin has become a highly debated and divisive topic in India today, with these two opposing narratives at odds with each other. How it started The association of the term, Aryan, with ethnicity and Caucasian superiority emerged during the 18th and 19th centuries c when Western European scholars began translating and interpreting Sanskrit texts. These scholars, often with their own biases, misinterpreted the texts and developed theories that suggested a connection between Sanskrit and European languages. One prominent figure in popularizing this concept was Sir William Jones, an Anglo-Welsh philologist, who proposed the existence of a common source for these languages called Proto-Indo-European in 1786 c. These theories contributed to the development of the notion of an Aryan race and the belief in the superiority of Caucasians. Jones's claim of a common source for Sanskrit and European languages inspired later writers and thinkers. Joseph Arthur de Gobineau, a French elitist, developed racist theories based on Aryan blood and white supremacy. These ideas were further popularized in Germany through the works of Houston Stuart Chamberlain, who became Adolf Hitler's mentor and inspiration. Jones's claim would also influence the work of the German philologist Max Muller who, in attempting to identify this common source via the Rig Veda and the history of the Indus Valley civilization, created the myth of an Aryan invasion of the region which claimed light-skinned Aryans conquered darker-skinned indigenous people and established high civilization. The works of Gobineau, Chamberlain, 
and the Aryan invasion theory were embraced by the British in the 19th and 20th centuries. They used these ideas to justify their control over India, presenting themselves as the superior Aryans who were bringing culture and civilization to the region. This perspective was popularized by the British archaeologist Sir Mortimer Wheeler, who excavated the ancient Indus Valley civilization cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. Wheeler claimed that his findings supported Muller's Aryan invasion theory, drawing a parallel between the fair-skinned Aryans of ancient times and the British as bringers of civilization to India. Challenging the Aryan Invasion Theory Renowned archaeologist Professor B.B. Lal, with over half a century of experience, challenges the Aryan Invasion Theory AIT, based on his extensive archaeological research and discoveries. According to his findings, there is no evidence of warfare or invasion supporting the AIT, and he considers the theory of Aryan migration to be a myth. Professor Lal also emphasizes that the terms Vedic and Harapan represent different aspects of the same civilization, with Vedic referring to the literary aspect and Harapan to the material aspect. His work suggests a closer connection and continuity between these two facets of ancient Indian civilization. In his book, The Rigvedic People, Invaders, Immigrants, or Indigenous, Professor B. B. Lal presents compelling archaeological evidence showing the continuity of traditions and customs from the Sindhasarasvati civilization to modern-day India. He highlights various cultural elements such as yoga, the Shivalinga, the use of vermilion, sindura, and married women's hair partition, spiral bangles worn by women in Haryana and Rajasthan, the folk tale of the thirsty crow, the namaste greeting, Lord Shiva's trident, and more, all originating in the Sindhasarasvati civilization. Similarly, Michel Danino's work, The Lost River, on the trail of the Sarasvati, provides further evidence supporting this perspective. These findings challenge the notion that the Sindhasarasvati civilization was destroyed and replaced by a foreign Hindu culture and civilization. Instead, they suggest that modern India is a continuation of that ancient civilization. This viewpoint is supported by internationally renowned archaeologist Dr. Vasant Shinde as well. Another theory says that the AIT offers alternative interpretations of ancient Indian texts and epics like the Rigveda and the Mahabharata. Proponents argue that these texts can be read in a way that supports the idea of indigenous origins and the gradual evolution of Indian civilization, rather than an abrupt invasion and cultural transformation. There is another viewpoint that is, which disagrees with the Aryan invasion theory. According to this theory, the Indo-Aryan people and their languages originated in the Indian subcontinent. It suggests that the ancient Indus Valley civilization was the Vedic civilization, rather than a Dravidian civilization as proposed in the AIT. Supporters of this theory point to archaeological evidence and cultural continuity, as well as references in ancient Indian texts like the Puranas, the Mahabharata, and the Ramayana. These texts contain extensive genealogies that trace back thousands of years. In conclusion, the Aryan invasion theory has been a topic of intense debate and scrutiny within the field of archaeology and ancient Indian history. Renowned archaeologists such as Professor B.B. Lal and Dr. Vasant Shinde have presented compelling evidence challenging the theory and proposing alternative perspectives. Their research highlights the absence of archaeological evidence supporting a large-scale invasion or warfare associated with the arrival of the Indo-Aryan people in the Indian subcontinent. Instead, they argue for the continuity of traditions, customs, and cultural elements from the Sindhasarasvati civilization to modern-day India suggesting a gradual evolution and indigenous origins of Indian civilization.